Gears of War was the game that stayed in my Xbox 360 whenever we wanted to do multiplayer. That's not to shame any of the other great games we had for the system, but when my next door neighbor came over or my siblings wanted to play games, they came for Gears. Whether it was co-op or horde mode, some of my fondest high school memories were with Marcus Phoenix and Delta Squad, curb stomping, chainsawing, head shooting, or mortaring the crap out of the Locust Menace. For a time, Gears of War was considered the killer app for the Xbox. Its popularity rivaled that of Halo's, and much like that revered Titan, most lament the passing of days long gone when the tallied numbered three and no more. I must admit, I had checked out with the franchise after the release of the third game, but not because I didn't believe that more games would inevitably result in bringing the franchise down in quality, I just went on to other things. Years later, I did go back and play the subsequent releases, and it was like meeting an old friend. Gears is most known for three things, stop and pop cover shooting mechanics, fantastic multiplayer options, and being the summit of cheese and the ridiculous macho bro culture. This is a game series flowing with testosterone, and thus you'll know right away if it's something for you or not. That's not to say that there isn't substance and some solid storytelling buried in yet another military sci-fi shooter, but Gears kicks down the front door, makes clear its goals, and offers no apologies. There's something to be admired about the sheer audacity of its attitude, and it endears itself rather quickly to those willing to take the plunge. We're going to be ranking the six mainline shooting games of the series, based solely on my experiences and biases. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad Gears game, but there is a difference in quality amongst the entries, and I figure it's worth looking at what each game got right, what it got wrong, and what could be improved upon for future entries. Let's rev up them chainsaws, boys. think back to 2013, one of the things that comes to mind are sequels that basically killed time until more anticipated entries could come along. Call of Duty Ghosts, God of War Ascension, and Batman Arkham Origins are just some examples of this. That's not to say that they were all necessarily bad games, I just mean to say that it was clear to me that these series were shipping out stopgap games so as to continue brand awareness of a property before doing something grand later that would innovate the series. Gears of War Judgment does iterate a bit from Gears 3, but not always for the better. I like the focus on someone other than Delta Squad. The story shows us a bit more of the cog being the oppressive military arm of fascism. The campaign rotates the player character so that you're not always the same person. I like the option of being able to add temporary criteria in order to make missions harder. And I liked being able to play a section explaining where Baird and Cole went during part of Gears 3. However, the level design leaves something to be desired. There's a number of odd deductions from past games, like with its multiplayer offerings and the decreased amount of weapons you can carry, and none of the new characters are that interesting. The optional criteria are presented in story as if you were sticking it to the man and telling the redacted, truthful version of the tale, but none of the modifiers feel that risky or compromising within the storytelling logic so as to sell this idea. Why would the COG's official version of the events care that there was a heavy fog at one time, that Kilo Squad didn't have as much ammo, or that they achieved an objective within a limited amount of time? I think the developers were trying to offer something interesting beyond the standard Gears experience, and they ended up being too afraid of screwing up a good thing that it ultimately comes in undercooked. Judgment is still a Gears game, and thus it's still worth a playthrough, but this is the one I'm least likely to want to go back to, and it offers very little incentive for veterans to play through Kilo Squad's story again. Gears of War 4 leaves me puzzled. It offers plenty of new things for players, including new weapons and enemy types, an improved variety of scenarios within the campaign, more purposeful character development than previous entries, thus making the team members feel distinct, and it finally adds some vibrant color to the palette. The thing is, 
I feel like this game is derailed by extremely poor pacing. The first act drags hard, and the robot enemies you fight just aren't that interesting, and there's too many of their encounters. The game picks up when Marcus appears, but then he's captured, and the game comes to a screeching halt to depict an extended scenario where you're trying to rescue him. By the time you find him, you then spend another act just trying to get to a comm tower to call in a few old friends, and then the story's pretty much over at that point. I'm frustrated that so much of what has happened has been dull and routine without the cheesy fun and fast pace that populated previous game stories. On a gameplay level, I'm much happier with Gears 4 than you might think. It ticks off a number of my own personal boxes from what I want to see in a soft reboot, and it's fun to play. The weather mechanics in particular deserve special mention, as they impact gameplay in a great way, making you think more carefully about the weapons you are using, where to position yourself on the map, and how to use the situation to your advantage. I also love integrating the horde mode into the campaign by having the squad defend an area with some added fortifications, thus allowing you some creativity for how you'd like to approach the coming onslaught. On a storytelling level, though, I'm disappointed to see something full of sound and fury signifying nothing. We are given a new status quo that offers new possibilities for the Gears universe, but we don't delve into it that much and the game reverts us back to something that resembles the status quo of the original games, and so the opportunity feels squandered. We get off to a great start with the new characters, but by the end, it feels pointless to have made JD the playable protagonist because the interesting development doesn't revolve around him that much. Thus, the total of the game is less than the sum of its parts, and while I'm not adverse to re-experiencing the first chapter in JD and Kate's stories, it feels a lot like a first episode in a multi-part story that puts its emphasis in the wrong places. If you read the user reviews on the online Microsoft Store for this game, you'd think Gears 5 is a train wreck. Needless open world design, there's an abrupt cliffhanger, and oh no, another female protagonist who takes the spotlight from a long-standing male lead that is also dealing with mental problems. However, if you're open-minded enough to accept new changes and a gender flip, you'll find Gears 5 is starting to put the series back on course. Some of that earlier criticism is well-placed. The open world structure for a few chapters is at odds with much of the rest of the game, and there's little incentive to go exploring at the expense of the story. Plus, controlling Jack in co-op isn't nearly as fun as the standard shooting action, which is the best it's ever been. Behind some of these issues and some rather standard story progression tropes, Gears 5 is a really solid game. I much prefer Kate in the lead role than JD, as she is directly involved with the plot in a meaningful way and feels far more unique than generic white dude number five. Though thankfully JD does get some traction to his soul so as to make him interesting. The enemies aren't quite as bullet spongy as the previous game. Everybody gets a moment to shine, the world is fleshed out way more than the rather meager introduction that Gears 4 provided us, and I find the story to be much more intriguing than some of the prior titles, and the ramifications of this plot seem to be leading to an unusual place for Gears, and I mean that in a good way. It also explains the origin of the Locust more fully, which feeds back into the central theme of the Gears universe. Humans are their own worst enemies, and we create our own messes more often than not and could lead to inevitable desolation and destruction. While Gears 2 certainly hinted at this idea within its story, it's made far more explicit here and is infused with further elaboration so as to really hit home. I like a lot of the set pieces. I particularly enjoyed the opening act in New Ephira, the return to New Hope, outrunning a train to lower a bridge while fighting the weather and aggressive enemies, and the final act with placing the Hammer of Dawn beacons amongst a gigantic swarm invasion. Gears 5 is messy, but I feel like the Coalition are finally on the right track with the series, and hopefully, Gears 6 goes even further with this game's highlights. In hindsight, the original Gears of War feels tame in comparison to what came later. It's not the easiest game to return to given the advances of the later entries, but it is the one that's the most atmospheric, relying on the unseen to provide tension rather than just giving you constant hordes of locust foes. It plays out more like a pseudo-horror game, and it's a very effective one at that. 
It does have a lot of bombastic cheese to it like the rest of the series, but it feels muted now. It's a competent introduction to a concept and a new universe with its own rules. Some moments will forever remain with me, such as going through the dark streets of Ephira with the krill waiting for you to step out of the light, exploring the underbelly of a locust-infested emulsion mine, and defeating a fairly tough opponent in General Rom. The characters aren't that great, but they do have some color to them, and you can tell them apart rather easily. This game also feels built for co-op, which is one of the series' greatest strengths. They're still fun to play solo, but the fun factor is magnified with a buddy. The difficulty is a little wonky though. The standard normal mode might still be too hard for some gamers, though this was remedied with the Ultimate Edition version, as well as covering a major story beat that I always felt was missing from the original Xbox 360 release. Speaking of the Ultimate Edition, I would recommend this as the version to revisit, though the extension to Act 5 kills the pacing for me, and while I love the new cutscenes, I felt like the older ones were slightly better in their direction. Still, the Ultimate Edition does smooth out some of the gameplay systems, presents the campaign in glorious 60 frames per second, and gives us quite a few bonus materials to help explain some of the backstory, thus rectifying a major complaint that the original Gears isn't very deep with its lore building and giving the sequels much room to work with for future stories. Gears of War is lots of fun, and its reputation is well deserved as the game that finally gave Halo a run for its money on the Xbox. The finale to the original trilogy, Gears of War 3, is where the developers were getting a bit out of control with their ambition. This game is absolutely jam-packed with ideas, grandiose set pieces, and constant action. It's honestly exhausting to play through this game's story, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a satisfying ride. Its first half is an unrelenting stream of action that absolutely could do with a breather or two, but it comes together well thanks to Karen Travis's talents in writing. Marcus's story with his father is enough to carry the tension in the plot, but it's the relationship between him and Dom that's the highlight for me, and Dom's moment to shine in Act 3 is a wonderful addition of weight to the story. There are some great explosive spectacles here, such as with the Lambent Berserker in Act 3, the submarine sequence in Act 4, and working your way up the hotel in Act 5. Even with all this chaos, the cast as a whole are finally starting to feel like real people rather than vessels for action, and the gameplay systems are firing on all cylinders, meaning that the game is milking all of the good ideas that the team has been working on since the beginning. New weapons like the Retro Lancer and the Digger and the new executions add so much replayability to the shooting action, if only to gleefully watch each animation. As I talked about in the intro, Gears of War is a series known for its multiplayer, and this is the best of the lot. Not all of the improvements are great, but it offers the most variety for players, meaning you are bound to find something you like in its scenarios, maps, characters, weapons, and so on. Beast Mode is a fantastic idea that I wish was fleshed out more in later games. Horde Mode is as fun as it ever was, now with the added economy system to help fortify your positions, which helps to alleviate a concern that some multiplayer maps are inherently better for the mode than any other. And the more standard versus modes are still addicting. Gears of War 3 represents a culmination of great ideas, though it needs to take a chill pill every once in a while and work on smoothing out some of its rougher edges rather than just blinding you by adding in more new things to cover its sins. Cliff Blazinski complained that some people preferred Gears 2 to Gears 3 as Epic Games worked extra hard to make Gears 3 a better game, and he felt as though it was unquestionably so. I'm sorry, man, but Gears of War 2 is still the pinnacle of the series as far as I'm concerned. This is my favorite Xbox exclusive 15 years going on, and not much has come close to beating it. The only reason I don't count Mass Effect 2 is because it eventually did make its way to other systems. Gears 2 goes a long way to fix the criticism of the original game about its lack of world building. Even though there was a cliffhanger there, it didn't leave much room for the sequels to work with. Gears 2 is much better at building its world and beginning to weave together a history and ongoing trajectory for the series. 
Making Dom search for Maria the emotional crux of the narrative was one of the smartest moves this team has ever made, and that final scene with them leaves me a wreck every time. Each new character is memorable and helps to add some complexity to a series that was in danger of having its narrative be superficial window dressing to the action. The refinements to the somewhat clunky gameplay systems of the first are exponential in their effects and thus it remains a joy to play today. I'm never left feeling like something is missing despite the refinements that the later games gave us. It's much faster and tighter than before. The executions are a joy to watch unfold. The pacing is excellent. The set pieces are almost all great. The introduction of the horde mode was a masterstroke and it never stops being fun. It does have its deficits though. That centaur section on the frozen ice can go to the hollow where it belongs. The game is maybe a little too subtle in revealing the necessary backstory to help us fully understand these events, and I always felt as though it was a bit too easy. The final level especially is quite the joke given its grand size. Those complaints aside, I adore Gears of War 2, and it is as close as we have ever come in this series to producing a bona fide classic that deserves a place within the Hall of Fame of all-time great video games. Gears of War started out as yet another military-focused shooter set in a sci-fi realm, but it did break free of that label and became its own flavor. There's still nothing quite like a Gears game, and even though there was an understandable dip in quality after the initial trilogy wrapped up, each game is still worth the time and effort it takes to play it. In that sense, Gears is one of the more consistent, longer-running gaming franchises from the last 25 years. With Gears 6 on the horizon, according to various rumors and leaks, it'll be a pleasure to return to that world and enact what I call chainsaw therapy on so many monsters with gratuitous amounts of blood and aggressive feelings of bromanship.